Hello, I'm Quinny. Welcome to the channel. In this video today, guys, we're going to be going through episode 10 of Limited Chat. Looking at the cheap card strategy, we've brought in some key players and we're using this international break to now look ahead and really test the depth and make sure that we're all singing and dancing and ready to go for some SO5. As always, we'll be featuring your comments from Limited Chat 9 at the end of the video. As always, guys, leave your comments in the video to add your thoughts to the conversation about what we're talking about and they will feature on the next video. Like, subscribe, share, retweet, all that good stuff, guys, and let's get stuck into it. What we're going to do is going to be tons of fun. We're actually just going to build out the depth as best we can. Now, on Lineup Builder on SoRare Data, you can cast your eye as far as to game week 248, which is the 25th of February to the 1st of March, at which point MLS will be back. And I think pretty much every other region should be knocking around doing something. So it gives us a great opportunity to just lay all our cards on the table, see what the depth is like, where are the holes, where are the weaknesses, and see what gaps we want to plug. So we're going to start off with the regions first of all. Okay, now the easiest region is America. So America Limited, I'm just going to pick the Seattle guys and just move them to one side. I don't want them coming in to U23 or Global or, you know, anything like that. Play the Seattle guys. So the first region that comes in as a priority is definitely going to be Champion Euro Limited. Okay. It's lovely to see I've got some variety for goalkeeper. I've got Soraya, I've got Bravo, I've got Galashi. It's two champion leagues out of the five. I've got some sort of footprint, some sort of coverage in, which is fine. You know, two out of five is definitely workable. Soraya and Galashi are nailed on number ones. Of the two of them, Galashi is of course my favourite. And this is where we really need to really look at the defence. So Lukeba is a rookie and in good form now, but that is not guaranteed to last. Eric Garcia is injury prone, Savage is coming back from injury, and then the rest of the guys just have big ups and downs in form. So I still think defence, there is definitely something left to be desired in this space. And, you know, we're getting bang for buck out of these guys. They're all very cheap cards. You know, they all come with their own kind of headaches. And that's one thing people don't take into values too often is how reliable are these people? Is that price worth the headache that comes along with the cards potentially? Pick Eric Garcia because... Why not, really, you know? Midfield, the best one would be Kostic. I think that's quite obvious. And then up front, I do have some choices here again. You know, some nice choices, different shapes and sizes. Um, I'd probably opt to go for Dzeko because Inter Milan are just running away with the league and he's one of the key guys there. And in my extra spot, I can be quite versatile with. I could play another striker. I could bring a midfielder in. Kramerich. I think I might throw Kramerich in because he's always decisive capable. That's a nice looking team, isn't it? Now, thankfully... By the time this all rolls around, I'll have a U23 keeper. I'll have Matt Vesafinov, the, the main guy. We've had him for ages. I love him. Now, we're also going to have some nice problems in defence. Now, we've got Rio Hitate, who's definitely going to be my number one pick. Uh, but we also have, like, Diara, Rasmus Christensen, uh, and the, the, the rookie I mentioned last time, Lukeba. So maybe depending on the fixtures and whatever, I do have some variety there with a few different leagues covered in different other regions, which is fine. They can all feed into each other. I've got no problem with that at all. In midfield, Zach Ryan is the main man. Of course he is. Up front, I'm thinking Lotaro Martinez, but I also have Dyson Maeda. Again, maybe we go double forward. We go Lotaro and then Dyson. I think that's Dyson Maeda play. Buying three of him, I think that's really going to pay off for me in a big way. And it's Captain Zach Ryan around this neck of the woods. For All-Star, I think I have to play the Soraya in here as the goalkeeper because I, I cannot not abuse playing Lung and Challenger because of the other cards I've got. Um, so Soraya, I think, will be the best goalkeeper. Now, the reason I would pick, me personally, All-Star over Challenger right now is because, quite simply, I can win any card out of All-Star. And Challenger, of course, you can only win Challenger cards. And I like that. I like having that option open and available to me. Maybe Christensen. I think I'd go Christensen because he's definitely the, get the biggest peak potential and that's what we're looking to consider in this league. Midfield, I've got some decent options. I've still not picked my Gavi or my Paxson Aronson. I think Gavi could be a great shout for this team as well. It actually feels a wee bit criminal that he's not in my U23 looking at him because he's such a nice... He's, for me, he is, he is the rookie that you want to have on the platform at the moment. I've got Dyson Maeda. If he's playing for Celtic, I cannot not play him. You know, I've got a lot of meh. You know, I've not got too many standouts left as we get to this point in the depth chart. But I think I might be able, I might be quite comfortable putting Pax and Aronson in. Double rookie midfield. Yeah, I can get behind that. And I think I'd captain Dyson just because uh, he's a more senior player on the team, basically. <laughs> and then we come on to Challenger. So Longbuster is straight in the goals. That's just, you know, it makes total sense for this depth. I've got Diara and Kandus, but I think I'll just go with Diara because I think I've kind of bought him for this purpose. Yeah, I think I might go with Hamidovic. 
I think he's just more likely to have promising fixtures in general. I've got, still got a Dyson Maida to go around. <laughs> and then my extra spot, I've still got like rookie Benjamin Sesco. I would love an another U23 league or even a rookie. Imagine he did a limited rookie league. I would love that. And then in terms of the last spot here, I've got a few okay options like Sobolev, Nadish. Nadishimai. I think I'll just go with Nadishimai since I've just brought him in. And then yeah, so it's basically the Turkish contingent plus Captain Dyson. <laughs> so I can I can live with that. Now, straight away I can tell that it's 281 points on average to bag a reward out of All-Star Limited. And there's about 30,000 possible rewards. So this kind of team, could this get to 300? I think it's more than possible of doing so. And I remember, you know, I spoke a lot about Limiteds at you know, I'm trying to use parallels from when I was first acquiring rares and first climbing leaderboards that I can draw into my limited experience. First of all, I had a benchmark of getting to, because the threshold and everything used to be a lot more different. So my first threshold with rares in terms of targeting prizes and whatever was always 350, always. But it feels like limited, we're getting a lot of... Um, encouraging signs that around the 300 point mark will get you into the prizes and america champion this isn't too accurate to be honest with you because i don't think that division's been active long enough to be quite honest champion euro we're thinking maybe about the 350 mark just like the rare situation which is a bar we can set quite easily it's an average of 70 and a 70 raw score as i call it you know so like before multipliers before captains and all that jargon average of 70 you know basically and um so I, I think this team is very capable of averaging 70 no problem at all goalkeeper 60 defender 60 i could get a couple of 80s out of the other three and then one of them gets a 70 themselves happy days uh, and then you know that's not including captain bonuses or xp bonuses you know if i can imagine the possibility of their so5 contribution being that powerful on a match day and then this team just excites me no end Rio at the back Zachariyan who is a FC Barcelona legend at this point captain in midfield and then Lotaro and Dyson so I'm actually really happy with that now what it leaves me with okay when I go back to All-Star Limited and I hit on this extra spot it gives me a great opportunity to zoom out and see all the cards right so let's see everyone who we've now got spare I'm not going to go through this with using and you know with a fine tooth comb but I have done this already and I'm assessing the strength of them how viable they are for me to use likely contribution they can make on game weeks depending on how the fixtures pan out all that kind of thing and a lot of the backdoor stuff I've got here, the lot of cheap, the cheap cards that we started off with, building up and just, you know, treating them as if we're burning the ETH, gives us a nice little platform, gives us a nice little base that we can, like, you know, these strongest teams have room for improvement. Is Pax and Aronson the best midfielder I could get my hands on to play in All-Star Limited when all the leagues converge? Absolutely not. But I do have some padding and some fixture uh, gerrymandering that I can mess about with for that. But midfield is particularly because I'm doubling up on strikers in a, in a few key leagues here. So the need for me to get better midfielders, the pressure's off because I do have a lot of high quality strikers. And it's important you assess what positions you are strong in because you don't want to continuously acc accumulate more and more strength in a position where it's, you know what, I can only play a max of two of this position in any lineup. And once you get past that mark, and then once you get past that mark of having, having some padding and having some cushion on the fixture, the way the fixtures actually line up, then it becomes redundant. You need to then reinforce other areas. Is my midfield a bit light? Now, I've got a lot of head count in midfield, certainly, I would say, but I don't have a lot of distinct quality. Zakarayan and Kostic definitely absorb a lot of that. Um, let's see what the American guys and the Turkish guys and the rookies do, but that is literally the, the summary of what else I've got lying around. But what that then draws me to is a lot of the things that I have lying around out of my 108 cards, you know, 38 of them are rookies. And don't get me wrong, I love this collection. I think it's lovely to look at. <laughs> nice rookies, a bunch of cool football shirts and a bunch of new careers starting out. Hopefully some of these guys will be absolute superstars, absolute legends and, you know, they'll be great cards to have. But until these guys ripen, I do need to be mindful of this balance of, you know, power and where I'm lacking. So the first comment that comes in from the last video is from Moldy, okay? So good luck with branching out into more limiteds. I've been trying to upgrade a few of mine into Carlos Heel and Mukhtar, but the prices are jumping up so much now. I think this season I will try, I will try my best goalkeeper fixture into global. Uh, if this means losing an Asia and American team, then so be it. Up the Hatate and the Maida. So uh, Moldy, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely with you there as well in terms of upgrading to get some more strength in. Particularly, again, you're talking about midfielders. So I find that's probably one area of limiteds maybe a few of us are overlooking. It's something that we definitely need to 
to think about for sure. And then Mike Basson, MT Wallet here himself. Uh, now he's got a club again. Will we be picking up a Man City legend, Mangala? Probably not, but you never know. Crazier things have happened, I suppose. Guys, in the comment section of this video, leave your thoughts on, you know, your depth. You know, when you've assessed... You know, when you go into lineup builder and you look at that game week, what revelations have you came across and what things are you going to implement into your club over the next four weeks to prepare for that convergence of fixtures? Hope you've enjoyed this one. Guys, don't forget to like, subscribe and share and retweet and all that good stuff. Stay out of trouble and I will catch you on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.